Council and STPI. I welcome you to this public-private dialogue on improving the value addition and export potential of horticulture sector in Pakistan. As uh, most of you would know uh, through our uh, invitation text that the main objective of today's dialogue is to support uh, the government to understand uh, what facilitation may be required for uh, value-added sector in food and agriculture, and we will take up the case study of horticulture in particular. We also uh, recognize uh, the need to cope and pivot uh, during and what kind of improved coordination may be desired uh, both at the federal and provincial government levels to expedite measures to support uh, private enterprise. Uh, the main outcomes from today's dialogues uh, are, of course, inputs for Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Food Security, uh, FBR and the Central Bank. Uh, and we are much pleased today to see uh, multiple divisions of Ministry of Commerce who are able to join us today. I'm grateful to them. I have six speakers uh, on my list and I'll introduce as we go along. However, just by way of uh, introduction, these are uh, Mr. Saud Bangash, uh, who's resident director of the Pakistan Business Council. He'll be joined by his colleague, Mr. Jawad Rahman, We'll have Amir Hayat Bhandara Saab, Dr. Amina Hassan, uh, Mr. Abdul Karim Neiman Saab from uh, TDAP Ministry of Commerce, Mr. Osman Qureshi Saab, the CEO of Pakistan Horticulture Development and Export Company, uh, and Dr. Mohammad Rita Alpur Saab, Ministry of Food Security. And closing remarks will be given by Esan Malik Saab, who's CEO of the Pakistan Business Council. Uh, I'm also grateful to uh, many of the attendees who are joining us over here today uh, and, and uh, really grateful for your interest. I can see some more colleagues uh, uh, who are joining us. We have confirmations from more, uh, but just in the interest of time, uh, I would like to hand over uh, to uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Mr. Saud Bangash Saab for his welcome remarks uh, and also uh, take this opportunity to thank Pakistan Business Council for their partnership and collaboration towards today's meeting. Uh, Saud Saab, without ado, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Vakar Saab. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be collaborating with SDPI today on this session. Uh, the Pakistan Business Council, uh, on behalf of the Pakistan Business Council, I would like to welcome all our guests here today. Uh, PBC is a leading business advocacy institution of Pakistan, uh, which represents all levels of industry and speaks for Make in Pakistan. Uh, PBC member companies, which are 82 currently in number, uh, span across 14 different sectors and are major contributors to the economy of Pakistan. Uh, and when I say that, I mean that these companies contribute 11% to the national GDP, 18% uh, to the national tax receipts, and about a fifth of the exports of Pakistan. Uh, so, and speaking about today's topic uh, particularly, um, it is, a, I feel, and PBC feels a significant and a unique contribution to the knowledge uh, space uh, because uh, a study in such detail and focus on the prospects of value addition and exports of fruits and vegetables um, in my recall, hasn't been attempted in the recent past. Uh, PBC really hopes that this study will provide leads and uh, will contribute to developing a comprehensive policy on developing Pakistan's horticulture uh, sector in the near future. Uh, representing PBC today, I'm joined on this call uh, by the distinguished uh, PBC, uh, by the distinguished uh, CEO of PBC, Mr. Hassan Malik, uh, the Director of Research, Mr. Samir Amir, uh, my colleague, Mr. Jama Jawad Rahman, who is also the lead researcher for the study. Um, and uh, we have gotten help and uh, support from um, a subject specialist, Mr. Aman Hullah Husseini, uh, who is also on the call uh, and has uh, uh, contributed to the study. So without further ado, uh, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Jawad Rahman, who will make the presentation. Thank you so much. Over to you, Jawad. Thank you. So, um, uh, thank you so uh, thank you everyone so much for taking out the time uh, and uh, being here for this uh, 
interesting topic on horticulture in Pakistan. Again, it's sort of one of its kind uh, work done in Pakistan as well. So as Saul introduced Pakistan Business Council, so I'm going to sort of skip this and come into uh, the horticulture sector of Pakistan. So the horticulture sector in Pakistan is primarily focused on the domestic market. Uh, there's a limited export surplus that Pakistan grows. So Pakistan is a net importer of commodities to the tune of around $200 million. Uh, Pakistan imported around $870 million of uh, commodities and exported only $670 million. So it kind of shows that the focus is more towards the domestic market. And again, there's a limited export surplus available which Pakistan can also export. In order to reach global markets, Pakistan would have to produce uh, commodities and value added goods, uh, which are products uh, from those commodities, which are in international demand. So as a point of reference, oranges, uh, the global trade on oranges is around $10 billion and $6 billion in orange juice. By the same time, on man in mangoes, the total market size is estimatedly around $2 billion and half a billion of mango value added products, which would be pulp, puree, and or mango juices. So there should be more focus and in investment, investment into commodities and products that have larger gains and have a larger international, international market as well. Pakistan's share in all the commodities that it exports is quite limited, and also all the value added goods, uh, products that it makes from it. So the highest share is citrus, around $150 million. And the world share is very low, around 1.5. So Pakistan can gain a significant sort of uh, marketplace by increasing a little percentage in its global market share for, uh, for commodities like citrus potatoes and uh, mangoes, for instance. Uh, in value-added products, uh, the market share is quite, quite low, like around half a percent, if that. So we're going to look into what the global marketplace is. Uh, what commodities and products are traded and which, which are the largest ones in trade. So where, where can Pakistan sort of align itself well uh, and what other countries have done as well. So we'll sort of quickly have a quick overview of it. The commodity market, that is the fruits and vegetables, has grown by around four times in the last two decades. While there might be a small decrease maybe due to Corona, but having said that, over the years, the trend is showing a significant increase and largely in through fruits. Uh, so it's grown by around four times in the last two decades around uh, the global trade in commodities. So what are the top fruits uh, and vegetables exported around the world? Bananas tops the list, followed by citrus, grapes, and apples. In vegetables, it's tomatoes, capsicum, onions, and potatoes. These are the large uh, sort of chunk of what's, what's going around the world, and that's where the market is. Uh, there's uh, the market in other products is quite and commodities is quite limited in terms of value added products top of the list is grape juices alcohol and wines basically grape grape juices and alcohol alcoholic beverages which would be which is significantly higher around 37 billion dollars not for pakistan due to our own sort of cultural religious uh, limitations but then comes something that all that pakistan sort of can produce and has the base commodities that is potatoes in form of french fries and chips, orange juices, concentrates and frozen orange, uh, uh, frozen orange juices, tomatoes in the form of pulp puree and ketchup, mushrooms, uh, tinned, cooked, uh, and then frozen strawberries, which is quite small. So essentially is the, is these three, four uh, products like fries, juices, ketchup, and uh, tinned mushrooms, for instance. So this is a global market. So, had Pakistan kept pace with its peer countries, which would be Vietnam, Egypt, Peru, which, have, which had a similar starting point in 2003, Pakistan could have been exporting around 2.2 billion worth of uh, commodities from Pakistan. Uh, but it did not keep pace. Vietnam grew significantly, like 14 times. Egypt, around 11 times. Peru, by 12 times. And Pakistan, only two, three times. So what did Egypt do? And Egypt would be a very good benchmark for Pakistan too compare itself with, uh, because it has a similar landscape, it has the same um, Indus Nile sort of basin, which around which most of the agriculture is, and a similar sort of uh, political and religious structure, some of it quite overlapping. So Egypt underwent uh, IMF structural program in the 1990s. It deregulated its market 
remove price controls, incentivize uh, its farmers through different uh, incentives and a provision of credit, and what was the outcome? And it developed a, a very cohesive policy of what products are in demand in the world and sort of uh, grew, incentivize people to grow, its farmers to grow these products. Uh, and what's been the outcome? So Spain, it, Egypt has overtaken Spain and being the biggest exporter of oranges in the world um, and last year and probably this year as well. And it's sort of deep, it's looking to work with international big players like China and it's working to sort of secure investment from China and export commodities to the Chinese market. It's a part of their strategy and they're quite working uh, aggressively towards it. So we've looked at what the global marketplace is and we've sort of seen what's, what's grown in Pakistan. So what would be the right mix of Pakistan or would be top champions for Pakistan? So the key fruit for Pakistan with export potential would be uh, oranges or citrus that is. Pakistan does not export to any of the largest importers, which is China, the markets in EU, and in the US. It only exports a very limited amount, around $4 million to, uh, $44 million to Russia, and that to a very different variety. So again, all of the Pakistani citrus exports are to the regional uh, markets. Similarly, in potato, uh, Pakistan does not export, Pakistan is the largest export of vegetables in Pakistan already, but doesn't export to any of the largest, uh, largest importers in the world. Again, it's very local and regional, and Pakistan has very limited exports of the value added products of vegetables, which is again, a bigger market, which is uh, fries and crisps. And we look into why that, that is so as well in this presentation. So what are the key challenges that, that, that have been limiting Pakistan exports from the horticulture sector? And what are, what are the opportunities that lie within, uh, within the sector? And how can Pakistan sort of explore these opportunities? Uh, the first thing and the key thing is the yields are quite low. Uh, Pakistan does not compare to any peer economy or an advanced economy. Uh, the yields are around one third, one fourth. Without increasing yields, Pakistan will face difficulty in having a surplus. Without surplus, you cannot export. So we need more surpluses, more output, more product available to export and to produce and to process and have better market prices as well. Then we move on to the farms. Farms are quite outdated, antiquated, and which results in, which results in sort of 30 to 40% estimated loss of produce is significant. So that is, so the low hanging fruit that Pakistan sort of can work towards improving and reducing losses, having greater output as well. In terms of industrial production and sort of export market, uh, contract enforcement on farm and with the producers are, is very weak. It's not a legal instrument right now. There's no legal, legally binding contract agreements between producers and, uh, and farmers. So firms are unable to get the supply they need and the farmers sort of can, can, can have issues as well in supplying to firms without uh, having the right contract, contract enforcement system. And it sort of also limits further investments from uh, producers as well, and international firms as well. Infrastructure is relatively weaker in Pakistan, especially the cold chain. Uh, without a good cold chain, exports will be harder. Um, it is something that I'm gonna keep referring to Egypt. It's something that Egypt invested in and at times it worked with the private sector to provide these sort of incentives for the private sector to invest in cold chain. It sort of gave land to the private sector and the associations to make their own cold chain uh, at the airport. And that's sort of been very successful for them. And lastly, uh, without the right sort of input for uh, domestic production, uh, factories and firms and pack houses and the processors will not be able to have their uh, needs met. So increasing yields, so a huge opportunity for Pakistan to increase yields is by having high density plantation, which is something not being done at the moment. Uh, on a hectare, roughly around there, around 200 plants. Globally, it's 1,600. That's a significantly higher number. That's around 100 times more trees in one hectare, which results in around 300 to 400, uh, sorry, 300% increase at the least. Again, there are limitations and challenges to it, uh, but uh, into adopting this, it would take some time, it would take some investment, but the returns are significantly higher. It's something that is uh, even discouraged at, 
uh, at some institutes, which is surprising that something the whole world has moved on to and something that Pakistan shies away from and farmers shy away from. Something that something that Pakistan should definitely look into, encouraging uh, domestic production and producing more output yield uh, for processing. Having the right variety uh, would have uh, significant uh, benefits to Pakistan in, in terms of production, and it's a huge opportunity. So just to quickly touch upon uh, ketchup and tomatoes, for instance, Pakistan does not have the right variety to produce uh, ketchup. So Pakistan imports paste, it processes it, processes it, and even exports a limited amount to international markets. So imagine having the right variety of tomatoes grown, producing it in bulk, and reaching out to the export market in ketchup. Similarly, in potatoes, uh, the local producers are using potatoes for crisps for making fries, which is a huge issue because that's why it makes we have domestic producers have bad quality French fries. Uh, and again, we cannot export that, that quality and we're importing. So uh, these are the sort of limitations that need to be looked into. And uh, lastly, uh, very interestingly, Pakistan does not have summer oranges. So seasonality is an issue. So uh, varieties that have been grown in orchards for around 50 years, and no new varieties are sort of introduced to capture a completely new market, which would increase production, help uh, investment in value added processing, and increase exports. So these are the sort of things that Pakistan really need to look at. The, uh, one of the biggest opportunities for Pakistan in terms of export markets lies in China. China already is importing around $11 billion worth of horticulture commodities, 1.8, around 2 billion out of which Pakistan already produces. Uh, so, and it's something that Egypt is completely focused on. Under CPEC, uh, it's a favorable duty structure, but again, there's some SPS issues, some quarantine issues that need to be overcome. And with that, China should be one of the key focus destinations for Pakistan's horticultural commodities. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, contract farming is a huge opportunity for Pakistan. A contract farming will give, give the farmers the benefit of having a short market, something that everybody wants in a short market, better quality seeds and inputs, more training. Firms can focus on what they're good at, producing and manufacturing and not be worried about having the right sort of variety and uh, products being available to them and worried about that and focus more on production and uh, manufacturing and exporting them. So we've sort of looked into the wider range of what are the issues, what are the challenges and opportunities in Pakistan, what the international markets are and where, where Pakistan can sort of uh, excel at as well and, and in reach to international market. So in order to do that, Pakistan needs to have a cohesive sort of uh, policy framework, which would be with the, uh, with the federal level and at the provincial level. Uh, while there should be some unified principles under the policy, provinces will have their own needs and their own sort of uh, commodities and products that they want to excel at and some, uh, provincial sort of needs as well. So that can all be thrashed out, but there should be a unified sort of underlying principle as well. And the, through a consultative process with the private sector, uh, a policy framework should be formed, something that Egypt did as well, and, the, and sort of has helped them a lot uh, in, in moving ahead with their international uh, exports as well and production. Uh, one of the key features uh, or the key feature for such a policy would be to have enforceable contracts. As I mentioned, it would benefit both the producers and the farmers, but not having it uh, skews interests of parties. And by having that, uh, a, a key gap can be plugged in into the, uh, into this, uh, into the weakness of the challenges uh, which Pakistan faces. Then uh, the government should work into fast tracking quality and health standards with its importing countries. That is, for instance, if a country does not allow Pakistani commodities or products due to SPS requirements, the government should do should be able to work in opening these markets for the local producers, and at the same time, uh, at the farm level, provide the approvals that are needed uh, in order to export. So, if a mango mango period is around one month, uh, tests generally take around three to six weeks. So, Pakistan is uh, the farmers are unable to access or processors are able to access. Uh, uh, access the certificates they need to export. Uh, intellectual rights of seed producers should be protected. Uh, without the right seeds, yields will be limited and Pakistan will lose out 
in the uh, in the larger scale of things. So seed protection and quality protection, uh, seed intellectual rights should be provided to uh, large players such as, for instance, uh, international firms such as Bayer, which are uh, seed producers, which have limitations in Pakistan. Then we're going to look into uh, what the government can do as well. The government can do model processing facilities. The AFP plant in Multan is partially successful because it's working with the private sector and it shows the need. Uh, similarly, the government, like it did in, like in the case of Egypt, uh, it can provide uh, land and infrastructure uh, to the private sector or work with the private sector to incentivize them to make investments into this, uh, into the cold chain. Um, and lastly and quickly, I'm going to talk about price controls. Um, the government should sort of deregulate price uh, or have a pricing regime uh, at the provincial level while it is under their ambit uh, by having price distortions. Um, it disincentivizes it incentivizes the producers or farmers, uh, and it sort of limits their interest in a, in a commodity if there are price controls. Uh, and that would be the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Uh, I think we might be open to questions if there are any right now. I don't know if there will be more presentations and questions following that. Again, thank you so much. Thank you, Pijabat, sir, for this very uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, I think you touched upon some very important uh, areas, challenges, and of course, recommending uh, uh, policies which could help this sector. We, of course, uh, look forward uh, to others for building uh, upon uh, this, this knowledge which you have shared. Uh, may I now move to uh, our colleague, Dr. Amina Hassan. She's CEO of B Business for Social uh, Progress. Uh, having uh, a wide experience in this area uh, and having dealt with uh, several of these challenges. Uh, Dr. Amna, the floor is yours. If I can now request that uh, all the discussants, uh, if they could uh, limit their initial remarks to maybe uh, five minutes so that we can uh, give time to others. And uh, if time allows, we'll come back to you uh, at the end uh, with Q&A. Uh, Dr. Amna, the floor is yours, please. And thank you, STPI, for this uh, organizing this uh, very important dialogue. Um, I would like to touch upon basically two of the presentation given by Jawad Rahman was very comprehensive. Uh, but one aspect that uh, I couldn't see was the organic market aspect. And there is a huge potential. Um, I am saying that based on the experience because I am uh, part of an alliance. I'm the coordinator for the South Africa Pakistan Alliance, uh, Geneva Alliance, that was uh, put in place by Netherlands government's department, uh, uh, CBI. And uh, all the companies that are included in the alliance are small or medium sized companies which are exporting organic uh, products from Pakistan and uh, South Africa to uh, Europe. Uh, so EU market is the main destination for the exports of these companies. So there are two aspects. One that um, interestingly, the organic sector in Pakistan is still missing in the policy dialogue. And uh, however, if you look at the market, the potential is huge. And even at the moment, there is a lot of produce that is being exported, organic produce exported from Pakistan. This, these include also products which are cultivated and uh, also products which are uh, harvested from the wild plantations. So uh, there's a huge scope, but uh, we lack data information all these exports are made under the same HS codes. Uh, for example, if you are exporting bananas or apples, uh, whether they are organic or inorganic, you use the same HS codes. So from the export data, it's very difficult to tell what is the volume and value of the organic exports made from Pakistan to different countries at the moment. So there's a huge gap. Uh, which needs to be filled in. The only way we need, uh, we can find out about the potential of this market is from the destination market data. So this is some uh, some some place where where focus needs to be made. The other thing I would like to also uh, touch upon is the you know uh, women businesses uh, dealing with the organic sector, uh, either uh, dealing with the raw organic products like vegetables and fruits. 
uh, targeting the local market or uh, going into further processed products like uh, beauty uh, products, uh, which are organic and need organic supplies. So a uh, few things that I would like to mention uh, regarding the federal budget over here. Um, this time, like uh, last time also, there were a lot of assurances that uh, we were hearing uh, that the horticulture industry would be probably getting some incentives. But uh, this year also was disappointing like uh, previous years. And we don't see any measures or uh, uh, you know, incentives being placed, for, uh, particularly for horticulture and specifically for the organic uh, bit of it. Uh, the other thing that I want to highlight is that, uh, um, you know, there is uh, the ingredients um, that we, um, the organic ingredients that are, uh, that have huge potential. I want to give one example of uh, potatoes were mentioned over here by uh, Mr. Javadur Rahman as, you know, a raw material for the uh, crisp industry. But very interesting, there's a lot of diversification which is happening. One of the companies of our, of our alliance is actually has placed a, a you know, put a, a processing unit for extracting potato starch uh, in, in uh, Kasur, Punjab. And very interestingly, the raw material that they need is a kind of potato which is high in starch content. content. And the current varieties that exist in Pakistan, uh, none of them are suitable for making that, uh, you know, uh, plant, uh, uh, how to say, feasible, a feasible industry. And there are great hindrances that they are facing uh, uh, from the government departments to import the right variety of uh, um, uh, seed of the right variety of potato, those which they can propagate over here. And it will be uh, estimated that they'll need five to six years to at least get those permissions. So I think it's very important now we start looking at horticulture in much more beyond just the regular horticulture. There's a huge potential of uh, diversification plus, you know, refinement and uh, going towards, uh, you know, extracts. Uh, that if that industry is facilitated, it will not only uh, save a lot of foreign exchange uh, for the government to by import, which need to import the uh, potato starch from other countries, but also will create a lot of local job opportunities. So I think a lot needs to be done at policy level as well. Uh, and as regards, um, uh, do you want me to handle the uh, statement of Pakistan, uh, you know, uh, uh, how to say role in this now, or would you like me to come on it later on? Yes, Dr. probably we can come back to this later uh, if time allows, but really grateful uh, for your valuable uh, inputs uh, on the report, but also, of course, uh, giving your broad thoughts uh, on the subject. Really appreciate that. Uh, and, and without ado, uh, I'll uh, and move on to Mr. Abrar Hassan Saab. Uh, uh, I'm grateful that he has joined us today. He is CEO of National Foods. Uh, Abrar Saab, please. Ji, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to actually congratulate, uh, you know, on a very, very well uh, researched report. I think it uh, very accurately uh, addresses uh, all the issues uh, with regards to horticulture, uh, export uh, and uh, rightfully identifies all the problems and also offers the solution. Uh, you know, after reading the report, I would just like to limit my comments uh, basically from a converter's perspective because of my experiences of running national schools and utilizing these agricultural producers to, to convert and uh, make value added products. Now, one of the experiences that we've actually had, and I've worked very closely with farmers uh, on, the, on the red chili model, and uh, we've also developed case studies with the help of uh, Pakistan Business Council, which uh, you can um, uh, download and you can also read uh, some of the experiences that we had. But, you know, all the issues that you rightfully point out, they are there. But uh, from an exporter's perspective or a converter's perspective, I think one of the most uh, important things is to realize the uh, right education or the knowledge base that needs to be imparted 
to the growers or the farmers uh, as far as the product specifications are concerned. So if we are actually going to convert a product and export it to a value added market, we actually have to, we usually receive uh, end product specifications from uh, the customer who is going to buy. And what we need to do is we need to deconstruct these specifications and work backwards and actually translate them onto farm level in terms of what kind of produce that needs to be produced uh, to meet minimum criteria uh, as far as the specifications are concerned so that a quality or a meaningful product can be converted for value addition purposes for export. Uh, you um, briefly mentioned about uh, tomatoes and ketchup and being the largest producer of ketchup. One of the issues that we obviously have is the right quality of ketchup so that uh, right quality of tomatoes so that when we use it and convert it, so we meet the standards which are set by the Pakistan uh, Food Authority, uh, uh, PSQCA, uh, or for any other country that we are exporting. And we find that over there, our produce actually falls far short uh, in terms of meeting, meeting the criteria. So uh, when, when a farmer actually partakes to improve uh, the quality in terms of plantation and everything, uh, I think it's important to realize that most of the produce which is coming out is not really usable. Uh, and we cannot export it because when we do export it, the authorities, let's say in different countries, the regulators over there, when they test uh, all the incoming uh, produce that comes in, they usually uh, quarantine the product or they usually fail the product. So if we are really serious about increasing exports, I think it's important to study with the help of private sector or exporters and a product specifications and deconstruct them and take them down. We did this for red chilies and we were very successful actually in creating a quality product and we had to develop a whole ecosystem uh, which basically complemented that and we are slowly working towards that. Um, secondly, I think it's important uh, to also realize that there is some level of uh, uh, pharma incentivization that needs to take place. Uh, I think there are a lot of issues which your report also highlights, the middleman, the RTs that we actually have. And secondly, uh, one of the reasons why we cannot actually uh, improve um, technology on the farming level actually is that the farmers actually don't have access to credit or money. So uh, I think it's important that uh, uh, private sector does get involved with agriculture and the concept of corporate farming actually has to be introduced because uh, corporations actually have money they can actually deploy the money and, and work with the farmers to improve the technology and also impart them uh, the knowledge base that is concerned. A second problem actually is that uh, typically the farmers in Pakistan who, who, who do the farming are not actually the landowners. They are sharecroppers uh, who are contracted out by the original owner. So obviously they don't have any collateral to offer to financial institutions, which uh, gives them uh, the money. Uh, which they can use for farming purposes or money for development purposes over there. So I'm very happy to state that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, with the help of uh, Pakistan Agriculture Coalition, the national food is part of, we've actually set up uh, the first ever collateral management company that has just been set up recently. And uh, uh, it should be operational in September and October, uh, September or October. And the whole idea is that farmers produce now uh, can be uh, can be used in a repository system, uh, um, you know, in uh, in uh, properly designed uh, warehouses where quality can be maintained against the specifications that are set out, and the banks can actually use that as a collateral to actually lock unlock the money and give that to the farmers directly. So these are you know just some of my experiences that I wanted to share. Uh, we certainly desire for the export to happen, but export is not going to happen just because that we plant more or we, we basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, make investments on the thing uh, in, in, in different producers or agriculture rightfully pointed out about citrus and stuff. You have to realize that when you export, there are a lot of non-tariff barriers in the shape of regulations. And unfortunately, while we are addressing the regulations set by uh, uh, you know, the importing countries to whom we are exporting. Uh, we find that in Pakistan as well, you know, we are over-regulated with a lot of uh, uh, government policies and procedures which are rather unnecessary. 
so for us to actually you know improve the whole ecosystem where we can actually convert this into uh, you know becoming a very strong exporter we need to address all of these issues and i think we strongly strongly need to look at deregulating a lot of our policies and procedures so that ease of business can actually take place and uh, we can uh, become a very strong exporting nation so these are just some of the uh, issues that Thank i want so to much, share uh, if you have any questions uh, really, i'd be very very happy to take them really appreciate these comprehensive uh, inputs of our sub and as you rightly said these are converters uh, perspectives uh, right from uh, uh, the, the ground where you people are working and experiencing these challenges uh, on day day to day basis. So thank you very much for educating us and sensitizing us on these issues. I think uh, both yourself and uh, Dr. Amina touched upon the incentives uh, for farmers or getting those incentives right for farmers. So I would jump straight to get uh, the farmer's perspective. And I'm so glad that uh, Amir Hayat Bhandara Saab could uh, join us today. I understand that he was on his fields today uh, while we have tried to uh, uh, catch him. Uh, Amir Saab, thank you for joining us. He represents Hayat Farms. It's uh, over to you, sir, please. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I have to set up my table even in farm for your webinar. <laughs> Uh, due to some technical issues, I joined later, but uh, uh, let me start with, as uh, Dr. Abhinav and uh, the later gentleman uh, discussed about the farming community. Well, uh, when you are talking about exports, the first question is, is what you are exporting. And when you are talking about the agriculture exports or food exports, you have to rely on the farming community, what we have. Uh, if we see just the numbers, so 80, 85% are small landholders, and uh, 15 to 20 percent are large landholders. So I'll disagree with the gentleman that we cannot uh, just say about this thing for just 15, 20 absentee farmers, 15, 20 percent absentee farmers. 80, 85 percent are doing their own farm. They have their own farm and they are family farms. So they are working for you. Another thing is for quality products, you have to provide them some financial assistance. Pakistani farmer is more concerned about his return of investment. What he is investing in agriculture or farm, he's just like a businessman like other people are doing. What he is getting is his question. So he definitely go for cheaper pesticides, cheaper uh, fertilizers. They definitely have negative impact on, on the end product. So that will surely disturb your quality to, to export the to produce what, what uh, I think National Food uh, uh, gentleman was saying. Another thing uh, which uh, I don't know what the presentation was because I joined later but I'd like to add here that we should actually work on on cooperative agriculture instead of the corporate agriculture. In the small farmers can be good people to, to cooperate with each other and, and to, to, to go for contract farming or whatever you um, you can say. But without small farmers, without protection of small farmers in Pakistan, you cannot uh, enhance your exports. Another thing, I don't know, it was uh, added with added in the, uh, in the presentation or not, but we, I think, are neglecting the dairy sector in Pakistan. We are the fifth largest producer of milk, but uh, our, uh, our exports are not actually standing at that point where, it, where they should be. If we just uh, 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 target our regional, uh, regional countries, I think uh, according to some experts, we can reach some exports of 30, 35 billion dollars. Another thing is, uh, like Obor, CPAC can help us. Uh, we uh, Pakistanis are allowed to send just two products in China. On the other hand, Vietnam, uh, I'm informed by some, some friend there that 80% of horticulture growth is supported by China. Why, why not we, uh, like in Pakistan, why cannot we go for that opportunity uh, to, to, to work? Uh, according to the constitution of Pakistan, agriculture is a provincial subject on the other hand, uh, the food security and export is with the federal government. 
So what federal government is uh, doing, they have to pass through the provincial government to reach the farmers. There we need something to be, uh, to, to make this uh, some, some collective policy, some, something good for, for the small farming community or the farming community or the agriculture sector to produce something good uh, uh, with the help of the provinces. Uh, the federal government must have to to uh, to take uh, uh, some good steps uh, uh, towards this. On the other hand, uh, what I think the researchers, your third question was the researchers and 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 uh, 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 the institutions can help the farming community is to uh, to, to identify the gap between the demand and supply. Like just a few months ago, we were uh, buying tomatoes at the price of 400 rupees per kg. But just after a few months, that was selling at three rupees or four rupees per kg, and even farmers had to flow their fields. Uh, we need to promote uh, local level uh, economical processing at, at the district or even at division level to take farmers on board and to help them to produce and process cheap uh, goods for, uh, in a good quality for our uh, exporters to send them to, to the uh, importing countries. Thank you indeed, uh, Amr sir, uh, for these very valuable inputs and really appreciate uh, you taking out time. I understand you're extremely busy today and there were connectivity constraints as well. So I really appreciate it. I do see that uh, some of our panelists are receiving questions in the chat box uh, on the right side uh, of our screens. So those of you who are able to do it, please feel free to respond. Uh, we have a lot of interested uh, attendees, both from the public sector and the private sector. Uh, may I now quickly uh, request Mr. Khalid Sattarsa, who is uh, the CEO of KNN, please. Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. It was an excellent presentation. Uh, I think once we have uh, farmers, we want to give incentive to the farmers. We want them to produce a quality product. All this will be done by the company that starts value addition to the products. Uh, the most important thing is that the value addresser uh, uh, company needs to be encouraged. They need to be incentivized. I mean, there are a lot of, I've already written a paper to uh, Mr. Razak Daud. I was working as the chairman of the Punjab Meat and Agriculture Marketing Board. And at that time in 2012, we had imported uh, citrus, seedless citrus also from Spain and planted them in the area of Laia and Pushab. And uh, we started grape plantation in Kotohar and the borders of Chulistan, Bhawalpur. These crops are very successful. But I think unless and until we have value addition, we will end up in uh, overproducing. These horticulture products have a very short crop period. They have produced so much, and unless and until they are consumed, the farmer will not get the right price. As somebody mentioned about tomatoes, one year you have surplus tomatoes, you have an excellent crop, the farmer loses a lot of money. The next year, he doesn't plant and the prices go up. So the consumer suffer. So if you are doing value addition, you can store these products, convert them into pulp and so many other uh, products for exports. Uh, unless and until the government does, we need to give concrete suggestions to the government, especially on taxation. Now, the packing material of these value-added products is extremely expensive. It adds to the cost. Once we have uh, a plant put up with these incentives and the machinery is, you know, ex exempted from all kinds of taxes and uh, the farmer, the, I'll give you an example of, uh, for instance, maize production. Rafan maize came in and they provided the right quality seed to the farmers. 
high yielding seeds. And they provided extension service and they were buying back. Now in, in, in fruits and vegetables, the same process will apply. The banks will give credit to the uh, value adder and through him, it will go to the farmer. Because he's got an arrangement of buyback, the bank is insured that they'll be paid and paid in time. And it will be in the interest of the value adder to give the right quality of seed or, or ask for the right quality of a product that he needs. For instance, tomatoes. For juice extraction, there are different tomatoes. For producing pulp, uh, there are different potato, uh, tomatoes. Likewise, there are different for, uh, you know, if you have fast food industry and you want to use uh, tomatoes for burgers, uh, large, extra large tomatoes, those can be done. But we need to really give concrete suggestions to the government on taxation policy and particularly you see you have sales tax on uh, packing material. These things add to the cost and we have to compete internationally with value-added products. Uh, I would like to see uh, Mr. Uh, Abrar has added quite a lot uh, to the contribution about what should be the way forward. And I think we need to come up with, uh, this is an excellent study, but the study will not do anything unless and until we give concrete suggestions to the government to come up with a policy which enables a value adder to come in. And you see, value adders will have to go to the rural area. And there's a great opportunity for horticulture uh, value added products export. In late, uh, Jameen Nashtar in 80s had invited all some of the very large multinational companies to and had held a seminar here. If they can come, if we can call them and they can come and we can show them what we can do, it will be a great help for, you know, uh, it will turn around the agriculture, horticulture. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Nawab Kalabakh, you see Nawab Kalabakh in, in 60s had imported uh, Washington naval oranges and planted in Fushab areas. But after that, nobody kept it up. We have done, as uh, I was the chairman of the Punjab Agriculture and Marketing Board, we imported uh, citrus from Spain, Washington Naval, and a few other varieties, and planted them in Fushab, uh, Leia. Uh, I think they'll start fruiting, inshallah, in uh, the next year or so. Uh, these things can be done, but you need value addition rightly done the study really gives a, a, a food for thought and uh, i think that Khalid, is the way Khalid, sir, thank, thank you. you so much for these inputs really uh, appreciate the way you have uh, uh, highlighted the need for continued and probably deeper engagement between uh, the larger firms the mncs and the farmer I think uh, th th this was an element which had to be brought into the discussion. So thank you. Uh, uh, before I uh, move to our colleagues from uh, uh, the Ministry of Commerce and DDAP, uh, may I uh, quickly request uh, uh, Dr. Ikrar Khan uh, who's a very renowned horticulturist, former vice chancellor of uh, uh, University of Agriculture, uh, Faisalabad, uh, uh, sir, please, uh, for your inputs. Thank you, Vakar. Uh, I would like to compliment uh, PBC and uh, SDPI for uh, putting together this event. I received this report yesterday from Sayyid Yavar Ali, and I just uh, uh, finished reading it. And uh, a very uh, comprehensive presentation made by the representative of PBC. Uh, to me, there is uh, uh, a serious... Uh, uh, gap in this report. A very important horticultural commodity has been uh, left out, both volumetrically uh, as well as uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, financial impact, and that is dates. There's no mention of dates in the PVC report. Um, I support uh, most of the uh, policy prescriptions, uh, 
but uh, I would like to caution that there is hardly anything that uh, the government would do. What is required is actually entrepreneurship. Whatever you have so far is because of entrepreneurs. Uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, misunderstanding about uh, this uh, citrus business. I have spent my lifetime in this citrus career. Uh, the kilo that we are growing and exporting, it's all going into ethnic markets. And uh, it is not fit for processing. The citrus which are used for citrus juice and concentrate are very different varieties. MNCs like uh, Cargill came in and uh, uh, failed to uh, convert it into a viable business. Uh, if you want to capture uh, uh, the, the bigger citrus market, it has been rightly pointed out that uh, we need seedless citrus, but not the Washington level. There is citrus variety adaptation uh, science, and it has to be seedless canoe uh, or some other Mandarin variety and not uh, Washington. Well, I'm very familiar with this field, and uh, I know the limitations of different varieties. Uh, also, I, I endorse uh, the feelings here of uh, uh, the range of uh, starch and sugar requirements of uh, different uh, byproducts of potato and uh, different concentrate uh, composition of tomatoes for ketchup or for concentrate or uh, for juicing. Uh, so so those, those uh, technologies are available on the shelf. So what do we want from policy or from government? There's hardly anything for, for government to do because uh, government does not have even the track record of doing those things. So whatever we have so far is uh, because of uh, right mix of entrepreneurship and uh, uh, good linkages. For example, uh, it's very heartening to know that uh, the commodity exchange will uh, start operating and uh, that will uh, act as collateral. Uh, Pakistan Agriculture Coalition is doing a wonderful job. Uh, National Food is a partner in that. Uh, PBC uh, uh, could do some uh, advocacy work as they are an advocacy organization in terms of uh, actually deregulation and in terms of uh, keeping government away as much as they can. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Really appreciate uh, your, your very crisp inputs. And uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, the, the point about uh, having dates uh, and uh, the analysis around dates is also uh, well taken. Uh, and also uh, the point around deregulation uh, of markets, something which the report does uh, highlight. But I think this is a very good point from your side uh, on the deregulation and uh, the very process of it, how to deregulate and what to deregulate. And with this, if I can uh, uh, move on to our uh, uh, colleagues from the public sector, uh, I'm really grateful to uh, Sir Frazik Balsa, uh, who has joined us from Horticulture Development and Export Company of the Ministry of Commerce. So I'll first uh, move to him. Uh, uh, Sir Frazik, uh, for your inputs, please. So I would talk about a few points about the uh, situation in fruits and vegetable sector after uh, yeah, uh, COVID situation. Uh, this has impacted fruit and uh, markets in two, three ways. Number one is the switch shift in the demand has taken place. For example, in EU countries, export or demand for our products has reduced. The reason being shutdown of food services, supply chain disruptions, problems in flights, etc. Second factor is overall due to decline in employment uh, in buying power, demand for fruits and vegetables, particularly exotic fruits, has little bit slided down. Then, of course, shift in demand has also taken place, and uh, no stress is on home deliveries or online buying or shopping because of the COVID situation. So on supply side, there has been issues like initially in Pakistan, we had problems on the supply of labor, transportation with non-country, 
cross the border situation then limited flights and you consumer has now shifted or being a uh, switching on to that the unprocessed or semi processed products because in case of covid situation or similar if the situation reemerges then there would be a more possibility of storing cereals or uh, processed food rather than perishables so there is a shift in the consumption demand then of course due to requirement of nutritional food or health related food demand has also increased for some products resultantly increasing the pricing but the negative side of this is the ones who have low income may face difficulty because of the higher cost of getting the product online what government can do is government can basically play balance the factors i mean between the exporters and the importers currently the situation is unpredictable no doubt there has been some decline in some countries even in pakistan also the covid situation is improving but there are couple of countries there is the emergence of the covid so there is a risk and the situation is still unpredictable so there is a need to formulate a realign the strategies accordingly so for the government to do is to encourage online buying or selling then of course some of the eu countries and other countries have allowed import of products by accepting documents e documents the same can be facilitated by the government and also it can be negotiated with the other countries to accept similar documents for the products so that the trade continues or goes smoothly then for the exporters and now that there is in particularly in the european countries there is a shift from buying from supermarkets from the to the retail stores so the exporters has to know more stress for the retail stores rather than providing in the wholesale markets and then of course get the their due share then of course our packaging needs to be improved or realigned and highlighting the nutritional facts we, we have not been doing much on this and this needs to be because now the people are becoming more conscious about the quality of the health of the them of the immunity system so there is a need to improve our packaging and to include highlight the nutritional or health factors on that then of course uh, regarding i mean improve regarding the value addition couple of people has mentioned no doubt there is a plus point everybody is advocating on that but we don't have any proper generally overall speaking generally we don't have a proper research studies on that uh, the one of the speakers spoke about that they are producing starch but the quality of the potato the variety of the potato is not available so that means there was some lacking on the part of research or the feasibility that was prepared that means that the material was not properly i mean identified so we have to before starting our encouraging value addition there is a lot of need for having proper studies to assess the economics of that those particular projects and of one of the comment i would like to make is regarding the agriculture sector improvement there is a need strong need for cooperators but we as pakistani lack much on that cooperatives no doubt on the one hand would strengthen your marketing side your marketing capability and then of course 
would facilitate in getting the benefits from the government, from the buyer, and of course, even the banks, because then you would have a proper collateral or proper stance to offer. So government may incentivize rather than providing incentives to the individual exporters, perhaps preferably provide incentives to the cooperatives. So that's all what I would. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Really uh, appreciate your inputs. Uh, I think there may be uh, some questions for you in the chat box, which you may like to uh, respond to. With this, let me uh, move to Mr. Abdul Karim Saab, who is uh, Director General Food at Trade Development Authority of Pakistan. Sir, please. I appreciate the presentation by Mr. Jawad Rahman. It was very comprehensive, and uh, some points were missing, uh, like uh, it was mentioned that organic products were not mentioned and uh, uh, there was also the problem of its stone in our citrus. So uh, the demand of our citrus, it is due to stone, the demand of our citrus in international markets, mainly from developed countries, is very low. So uh, uh, these two points were subsequently included by uh, the panelists. Uh, another point which I want to discuss is, is the halal certification. In food and agriculture products, uh, there is great market of halal products. Until and unless we do not certify that uh, these products are halal, uh, we cannot increase our uh, exports. And uh, another thing, uh, point is that uh, there is need of mechanization of forms. Uh, in the COVID situation, uh, uh, according to WTO, the agriculture products uh, has, uh, the demand of agriculture products has not decreased. And it is manifestation of that, that our rice exports, instead of decreasing all other products, rice exports has increased from 2.1 billion to 2.2 billion. And uh, uh, there is possibility of increasing the rice exports from 2 billion to 4 billion by just mechanization of form. And in Trade Development Authority, we have, uh, uh, with the Rice Exporters Association of Pakistan, we have made a project uh, in order to incentivize the farmers. We have made the project and it will be submitted by Rice Exporters Association of Pakistan to uh, Export Development Board. So, Trade Development Authority of uh, Pakistan is making the efforts for the globalization of the companies uh, through training of the uh, businesses. And in the COVID situation, there is need that uh, uh, the companies should go online because uh, it is said that in future, the future is of online business. Instead of uh, container products, uh, the future is of packaged products. Uh, so uh, uh, it, is, it is the need that uh, our company business should, go, uh, should be globalized. There should be online uh, products available from Pakistan. And uh, the third thing is packaging. Packaging industry is, uh, is very important in the COVID situation. Uh, uh, the fourth thing is that, that uh, in the COVID situation especially, uh, there should be uh, minimum hand stretching the product. So uh, it is necessary that the middleman should be eliminated and the, uh, the products at the manufacturer's levels should be exported. So the uh, uh, Trade Development Authority of Pakistan has been working in the lockdown situation. We work from our home and uh, tried our best that the companies which have been have received the orders should not be affected of the COVID uh, situation and the lockdown. We verified the export orders to the provincial governments and they allowed uh, the export of those companies. Uh, in many, uh, in the lockdown, we verified the export orders and uh, uh, we tried our best to uh, settle the, the issues of the exporters. 
in many countries uh, uh, the the scan documents were not accepted so we took up with our commercial sections and many of the countries uh, accepted these scan document documents uh, indonesia was there malaysia was there turkey was there and russia was there so uh, because the dhl was uh, was closed due to lockdown and uh, we have been trying our best to uh, support the trade and uh, this is the government department which is without any uh, problem to the business community they come and meet us we deliberate on various issues and uh, we take actions uh, according to their suggestions this is the field department and we have been uh, supporting them uh, the, there is great potential to increase the export of horticulture products and agro products and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we will uh, be resolving all the issues and uh, uh, we are uh, we welcome the uh, suggestions regarding uh, uh, any research reports uh, we also welcome uh, for the uh, businesses your support for, so that we can uh, we can all uh, inform our businesses regarding the trends in international markets and uh, the demand side and also the supply constraints we can mutually uh, move forward thank you very much thank you kareem sir we uh, really appreciate your inputs over here we do understand that uh, tdap had to work uh, through some uh, difficult times uh, during uh, the lockdown phase and as the lockdown uh, eases of course uh, the interprovincial coordination has been uh, of an issue and uh, uh, we also uh, welcome your suggestion regarding uh, evidence generation around the subject and the new research which needs to be produced post covid uh, in terms of exporting trends uh, and we may come back to you further on what are the specific uh, or sector specific needs uh, on which evidence is desired uh, by tda uh, but uh, i think uh, the report has uh, generated a lot of interest today so uh, maybe uh, without any further ado i should go back to our colleagues from the pakistan business council i do understand that uh, ehsan saab has yet to speak but uh, given that there were some uh, questions and uh, some some uh, specific comments on the report i'll go back to south saab uh, for a quick response uh, before we hand over to ehsan saab ji saab sir thank you so much uh, dr saab i mean uh, thank you for the time uh, i'll i'll very quickly go over uh, before we can uh, hand over to ehsan saab for the closing remarks i'll go over some of the comments which have and questions which have come on the chat box and also uh, some specific questions which came by uh, some of the speakers um so first and foremost uh, i saw a question about or comment about the quarantine agreement with china as one of the hindrances uh, which actually has prevented so far us exporting as pakistan exporting to china fruits and vegetables this has been highlighted in the in report also and it's definitely something uh, pbc has been asking the ministry of national food security to update on regarding uh when we should expect this quarantine agreement with china to be signed uh this is a critical point um secondly i think uh, a question and a comment came from uh, khalil sitar saab about you know the implementability of the recommendations of the report uh for that uh, pbc is of the opinion that you know they one we do not have a policy specific to the horticulture sector we have a general uh directional policy we've had in the past about the agriculture sector in overall but as egypt has done is has uh, is that egypt has developed over the past 7 8 years a very specific focus uh, on 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 uh, developing the horticulture sector and making it export focused uh, i want to reinforce and reemphasize the point which abrar hasan saab made is to look is that to look at the end market 
and then work backwards and de deconstruct uh, the requirement of the end market to the farm level. I think that is uh, one approach. And obviously this report also is very focused on how to add value, how to do value addition, which is an industrial process. So what does the industry need? You know, some of the key points pointed out in the report are one, in order to smoothen supply, uh, you know, contract farming and the legal uh, framework around how to enforce those contracts is very critical. So we need to work on that. Plus on the quality infrastructure side, how do we ensure that quality certificates for exporters are provided in a timely fashion? Uh, other than that, cold chain infrastructure is something which is critical. And last but not least, uh, you know, deregulating prices at the farm level, particularly for fruits and vegetables, we feel is important because that incentivizes and it helps the farmer make a choice to grow more fruits and vegetables. So increasing supply that way. So this report is about processing. This report is about industrial uh, production. Uh, and that's where why we felt it, there was a need to bring some light and focus on this topic. I want to invite my colleague Jawad Rahman to comment on uh, a comment which came uh, about the dates. Uh, I think it came from uh, one of the speakers about the fact that how we have treated dates as a commodity in the report. So Jawad will be commenting on that. And after that, I would like to invite Mr. Amanullah Husseini, who's the external consultant uh, who, uh, who worked on the report, to comment about the demand for citrus. I think one of the other speakers spoke about the fact that uh, citrus demand uh, needs to be more clearly understood. So first over to Jawad and then to Mr. Amanullah Husseini. Jawad, over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, sir. Uh, the question regarding dates, so we've looked into dates. Uh, what's interesting about dates is that uh, the overall global market for dates is around 2 billion. And again, it's very regional. So it would be uh, concentrated towards the Middle East, to the mainly Muslim majority areas primarily. So Pakistan already exports around 100 million, $100 million of exports, so dates, and uh, primarily to India. So the quality of dates and the infrastructure for dates is uh, it's a bit harder. It's a steeper climb. And the value addition, the value that Pakistan can gain in the future through date export would be limited. So just to sort of highlight it, so a plant, a date plant would roughly take around eight to nine years to grow before it yields fruit. So the time for investment is quite high. And the returns in terms of for Pakistani context, in terms of exports, would be relatively limited because the, as I mentioned, as we mentioned uh, in, the, in the presentation, uh, we have to look what the global demand is. The global demand, for dates is again, again quite limited. Um, we have, again, as we said, champions. We could look at what the champions would be, and uh, dates would be quite low in the priority list. So, if Pakistan is doing well on dates um, uh, to a certain extent, and it should continue in doing so. But if there is a, a larger sort of con, if you're looking at the larger context or the big picture, uh, dates would not be the prime, shouldn't be the primary focus of the uh, of, uh, of how something should be encouraged. People are doing it, they should be doing it, is to continue doing something they're doing well. The orchards are there and, you know, uh, so that's the sort of context around dates. Uh, uh, I would like Sunny Saab now to sort of uh, give his comments on the citrus as well. Um, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I want to add what Jawad just said about um, uh, dates. Uh, the quality of dates, which is grown in Pakistan, is not comparable to what is grown in uh, neighboring countries, particularly uh, Middle East, Iraq, Iran, etc. <clears throat> Most of our, our dates uh, is sold as uh, 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 chawara or dry dates, and it is mostly it goes to India. So we have a very limited market and we don't have varieties which are uh, comparable to the rest of the world. So, uh, yes, and uh, even, even dates, dry dates, are vulnerable to relationship between India and Pakistan. And uh, if, if that market is curtailed, you, you will not know where to uh, dispose the, those dates. Uh, regarding citrus, but, but before I move to the citrus, 
I think during the discussions, we deviated a little bit from the focus of this study. The, the title says, Bottlenecks and Opportunities in Value-Added Exports of Fruits and Vegetables. A farmer will grow any fruit or vegetable which the household wants. They send the signal, we need this vegetable or this fruit. Similarly, for export, we need to know what the international market expects from us. Do they want quality or they want a cheaper food? Because do we have comparative and competitive advantage? That has to be seen. And unfortunately, we don't have both of them because we don't produce exportable quality in the right quantity. The second thing is our cost of production at the farm level is very high because the yields are very low. Similarly, now that fruit or uh, vegetable, if it is transported to the processor, again, our transport cost is high, our processing cost is high because electricity is expensive, gas is expensive, labor is expensive. So we can't really market, we can't be competitive. The other countries are providing bulk of their exports cheaper than Pakistan. So that is a very big constraint. Now, how to remove those constraints and challenges was the purpose of this report. And to, to remove those bottlenecks, we have to increase our yield, we have to increase our productivity, we have to uh, reduce the post-harvest losses, we have to have uh, proper uh, okay. transport structure, coal chains, uh, referred trucks, and then processors, and then uh, other things come in, uh, like um, hygienic uh, situation or health hazards. The way we are growing vegetables is mind-boggling. We are even using untreated sewage. Now, who is going to buy if this uh, uh, information is available to outside buyers? Nothing from Pakistan can go. So we have some fundamental uh, problems to be addressed. Uh, coming to uh, the question which uh, 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 Saud Saab has mentioned about citrus, uh, the the Local demand is so high for citrus, we have very little to export. And uh, the preference, what is the taste preference of outside people? Who is buying our kingdom? Is it Pakistanis or Indians or uh, Bangladeshis who are buying our kingdom? Or the, the, the expatriates or the locals there? So, uh, because kingdom is not seedless, and we don't have seedless varieties. So that is a big constraint, and the quality is not consistent. So uh, citrus so is, is the most promising fruit, but it has a problem both of quality, quantity, and taste, which is because unless you get signal from outside buyers, the exporter or the processor will not produce their thing. And unless this thing is uh, uh, sends signal to the farmers, farmers will also not produce. So we have a dilemma of where to address. The, the problems are horrendous, and we need to focus. We can't do everything, but we have to start somewhere. This is my submission. OK, so um, I, I want to, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bakar and your colleagues at STPI for giving us this opportunity for uh, airing some of the work that we've been doing. Uh, increasingly, as uh, you know, the audience would have realized uh, that we, uh, having been you know, very much uh, based in Karachi, were also uh, looking at uh, sectors that, that you know, uh, operate out of Karachi. So things like textiles and engineering and so on. 
Uh, but over the years, and particularly in the last year or so, we branched out in, uh, uh, in many ways. I mean, one of that is, of course, not to rely fully or entirely on our own researchers. So we are trying to get subject experts like we did in this particular case, uh, Dr. Amanullah or Mr. Amanullah Saab. Um, but we also uh, are looking at sectors like horticulture. We intend to look at meat. We want to look at uh, poultry. Uh, and at some point, we may also look at dairy. Uh, so uh, as Jawad uh, uh, mentioned earlier, that one of the key thrusts that we work on is something that we call make in Pakistan. Now, when we say make in Pakistan, we use the term very liberally. Make uh, can be substituted by produce. It can be substituted by provide. So produce in the context of agriculture and provide in the, in the context of services. So anything that Pakistan can add value to and has a market abroad in terms of quantity, quality, cost, et cetera, are the things that we are trying to focus upon. Uh, and in that case, uh, in, in that context, obviously, horticulture becomes um, you know, very important. Um, we uh, also want to make sure, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we focus on value addition not exporting commodities. Uh, in the past, you know that you know, we exported cotton to countries like China and others, uh, which simply added value, uh, and that then ended up competing with us, uh, with our own value-added goods. We also want to look at the broader policy framework. So when you look at the foreign direct investment policy, for example, we find that Pakistan does not differentiate enough between the kind of foreign direct investment that brings technology in the areas that Pakistan badly needs, and agriculture is one of them. A case in point of a very successful transfer of knowledge, know-how, et cetera, is Rafan maize, and we, we can see the results coming out in terms of the maize production in Pakistan. Um, Kargil had a go, but just because Kargil failed doesn't mean that others can't uh, enter. In the context of fruits and vegetables, for example, Del Monte, would be the prime target that we would like to have in Pakistan. So when we are uh, uh, talking to the Board of Investment, we are increasingly trying to get them to focus on skewing the, the FDI policy in such a way that you attract the right kind of uh, investment, the kind of investment that comes, uh, you know, that, that we, we badly want. Uh, you know, many people, including some members like Khalil Sattar and Abrar Hassan Saab, uh, have already contributed to the importance of credit, uh, and that is very much part of our make in Pakistan thrust, because without credit, whether it is in the engineering sector, whether it's in the SME sector, or indeed definitely in the agriculture sector, uh, we are not going to have uh, the kind of uh, productivity uh, and the kind of efficiency uh, that, that is required. Um, so I, I think on that note, I'm not going to repeat everything else that has been said. I think people have articulated the views very well. Um, we, uh, you know, I would put it uh, humbly and modestly, have made a start. This is not meant to be a PhD exercise. It's not a thesis. Uh, it is a pointer. Uh, most of our research is, is framed in that, in that way. Um, so take it in, in, in that context. Uh, it is, it is uh, you know, trying to, to get the government to look at the, the, the right kind of policy framework. But as very validly pointed out by, by a number of uh, participants, the government should allow the private sector to uh, to, to focus, uh, and that that is really uh, you know the note at which I, I want to end. So thank you very much for hosting us, uh, and we look forward to further collaboration in time to come. Thank you. Really appreciate that, Sansa. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, inputs. Uh, I think many of these require detailed uh, uh, elaboration, but as you said, nobody's trying to attempt uh, a thesis over here. The point is to uh, sort of generate a dialogue uh, uh, amongst ourselves with the government and how we can sort of help each other. Uh, I do see uh, that uh, Sayyid Yavari Saab has uh, joined us. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, so he'll be our uh, last uh, panelist for today. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you indeed for taking time out. Really appreciate uh, uh, the, the, your, your leadership here. It's over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and this is a subject very close to my heart. And I spent about 40 years in both uh, agriculture and the livestock sector. Uh, first of all, a uh, very comprehensive study and uh, all the kudos to uh, uh, PVC as well as STPI. I'd just like to touch on a few basic things. Number one, if we have to move forward, the, one, the first thing we need is technology. 
we are in a different age now of technology. So genetic plays a very important part. We've seen that, as mentioned, the case of, of maize. Second is the management, the modern practices. Uh, we are still, I think, in the 1900s. Third, as mentioned, uh, is the financial credit. But here, the important thing is the ease of getting finance, which uh, for SMEs is, is a nightmare. Uh, then uh, um, also mentioned was how to bring the best companies in the horticulture value chain. Here, uh, what the experience has been that if the investment conferences are focused, uh, let's say on horticulture and the whole value chain. So you bring the people who are in, in, uh, in Pakistan and the foreign companies, and you show them what the opportunity is. That, uh, that will, I think, uh, move it forward. Uh, two, uh, three years ago, I'd gone to uh, India, I went to Mohali, and I saw a joint venture in potato seed uh, with uh, Mahindra and Mahindra and NBVC from Holland. And they were producing potato seeds on a six acre farm, and Pakistan was importing potato seeds from India. Uh, on the export side, uh, Yes, we have to uh, follow what the consumer wants. This is both for domestic as well as for local. And uh, if it needs seedless oranges, yes, we need to do that. And one other very important is that we need to create businesses in the value chain, uh, whether it is uh, uh, in the seed side, whether it is the gold chain, and or in, uh, in the processing side. Processing is very important because, uh, as mentioned, it is only a seasonal product. So for overproduction or otherwise you need processing is the key. It provides a market to the farmer. And finally, I just like to uh, add, I think for the government or what we need is a three year uh, business plan and maybe a 10 year plan in which uh, this should be market driven where we, we should identify what are the resources required, what are the skills required, what are the incentives required, and because we're also going into a ever-changing uh, consumer demand and, and world demand. Finally, I think, uh, yeah, Thank and you just so finally, sorry, one, one last comment. Finally, I think uh, the private sector needs to step forward and we have to bring about a monumental change because what is important is we need to compete globally. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yavarsab. Really appreciate your guidance and advice over here. And uh, I think uh, at the very end, I'll join you in congratulating uh, the authors of the report uh, for bringing this out probably in a very timely uh, fashion and uh, at a time when most of these enterprises involved in horticulture are facing multi-phase problems. I do understand that uh, uh, Dr. Ramina also wanted to touch upon that specifically with respect to women-led enterprises in this sector apart from the SMEs, which Yavarsa rightly mentioned. So uh, just want to sort of uh, finish on time. I do understand we have four minutes past our time, but uh, really want to uh, thank all our colleagues, uh, the member institutions of Pakistan Business Council, the wider business community who have joined, uh, colleagues from the government. I, I saw uh, 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 colleagues from the civil service, a few members of parliament in our attendees list, so really grateful that they were able to join. Uh, uh, equally thankful to the discussants and the panelists for taking time out. In terms of way forward, uh, we have uh, two uh, main things. One of course is that there will be a summary which will be shared with you uh, in the next week or so uh, before it can be uh, formally communicated to our colleagues uh, at the Ministry of Commerce and the Ministry of Food Security. Please feel free to add more to that uh, quick summary uh, if you feel like. Second, uh, on our website, we have a live uh, system to receive your inputs. So in case you feel that there are any inputs which were left or couldn't be uh, sort of uh, shared in the chat box, please feel free to upload them at our dedicated webpage uh, for this public-private dialogue. Uh, uh, and then finally, of course, uh, we do understand that in this uh, meeting today, we were unable to uh, capture issues related to FBR. And that has been pointed out in the chat box as well. So probably in the second week of August, we'll try to uh, 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 
communicate you some time after, of course, uh, uh, connecting with FBR and probably touch upon uh, the tax refund rebates, uh, etc. Other issues which this sector may be facing uh, in that realm. Uh, I once again thank you for your time and look forward to continued engagement on the subject in future. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.